kids, I am so happy to be with you today. If you were here with us a few weeks back, you heard a little bit about the life of Paul. We only got to talk about him for a while, and there's so much to know about Paul, who wrote many of the books in the Bible. So today, we're going to back up in the story just a little bit and learn more about Paul and some of the things we can learn about Jesus from hearing Paul's story. So before we jump into the Bible story, I need to tell you something, though, about Paul. Before he was Paul, and before he knew Jesus very well, he was named Saul. But his meeting with Jesus changed him so much that even his name changed. And we're going to hear a little bit about that today. Our story from the Bible comes from the book of Acts, and it's in chapter 9. Today, I think Harper Collins Publishing for letting us hear the story from their book, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And you may have heard from this book before too. And remember, we can always learn something new from God's word. Let's listen and hear about Paul, who was previously, that means before, named Saul. Of all of the people who kept the rules, Saul was the best. I'm good at being good, he would tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He traveled around looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer, the, pe the one who had saved the people from their sins. He didn't believe that. And he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus. So one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul was on his way to Damascus, that's the name of a town, when suddenly a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice. Why are you fighting me? Lord, Saul answered, who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you are hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said, and I will tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His helpers that were with him had to hold his hand and lead him like a child. Saul was blind for three days. And yet, it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there was a man named Ananias who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him, and I will make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus' followers. But Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I've chosen to tell the whole world about who I am. So Ananias went to Saul. Brother Saul, Ananias said, it was Jesus you met on the road. And Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly, Saul could see again. But he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, which is the very opposite of being proud. And do you know what Ananias' name means? It means the Lord is full of grace. Grace is just another word for gift, which is funny because that's just what Paul's message was all about from then on. It's not about keeping the rules, Paul told people. You don't have to be good at being good for God to love you. You just have to believe what Jesus has done and follow him. Because it's not about trying, it's about trusting. It's not about rules, it's about grace. God's free gift to us that cost him everything. What had happened to Paul? He met Jesus. Paul got a new job. He called himself a servant and traveled everywhere telling everyone about Jesus. He got shipwrecked and he even ended up in prison. 
God loves us, he wrote from prison. Nothing can ever, no, not ever, separate us from the never stopping, never giving up, on breaking, always and forever love of God he has showed us in Jesus. And so it was, just as God had promised Abraham that dark night all those years before, the family of God's children grew and grew until one day they would come to number more than even all the stars in the sky. Boys and girls, Saul's heart was changed when he met God. Let's remember the story. Let's make sure we have that in our heads before we talk a little bit more about how Saul's heart was changed. I'm gonna give you three sentences with three actions so we make sure we don't forget what happened in this story. In the beginning of the story, remember Saul was mean and angry. So our first action and our first sentence that goes with it is, Saul was angry. We're gonna make an angry face and make a fist. Let's do it together. Saul was angry. One more time. Saul was angry. Then Saul met Jesus. And we're going to remember the part of the story where the bright light shone in his eyes and kind of shield our eyes. And we're going to say, Saul met Jesus. All right. So shield your eyes with me. And we're going to say, Saul met Jesus. Saul met Jesus. Shielding your eyes. You might even want to squint a little bit. Saul met Jesus. That's the second one. And for our third sentence and our third action, we're going to use the name Paul. Paul told about Jesus. So we're going to put our hands at the sides of our mouth like we're telling. Saul told about Jesus. All right, let's do it all three together, all in a row. Saul was angry. Saul met Jesus. Saul told about Jesus. Good job. I think we've got the story. Now to remember an important point in the story, not just what happened, but some a lesson that we need to remember from the story. I have a couple of eggs with me today. Now that might seem like kind of a funny way to remember the point of the story, but I hope it helps us not forget something that I believe God wants us to know and understand about meeting Jesus. So this is a regular egg from my refrigerator. It is raw inside. So if I drop it, it's going to make a mess. And I want us to think about the shell, the white part on the outside, and that it is hard. Now, if I think about how I could make this soft on the outside, it seems like it would be impossible. It's just hard. And if I drop it, you can see it broke. I think you can see it. It's cracked, it's hard, it cracked. But although making that shell seem soft on the outside seems impossible, I read something very interesting about softening an eggshell. And this is the first time I've ever done it and I believe that it worked. I put an egg from the same carton out of my refrigerator um, into this container of vinegar about a day and a half ago and it has been soaking there ever since. Just plain vinegar from the grocery store. I just poured it in there. I'm going to stick my hand in there. I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> Shake it off. It's a little messy. I might have a little bit of a mess to clean up. Now boys and girls, I don't know if you can see this, but <laughs> That egg is squishy. Isn't you're not hearing that hard sound on the outside? Just stay with me for a second here. I'll try to drop it in here. I've never done this before, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Oh, you guys see that? I'll try it one more time. It actually bounced. All right, you guys, I think this will be an awesome experiment if it's okay with your parents to try at home because this is super cool to me. It's squishy. and didn't do anything to that egg except soak it in vinegar. 
it became soft, so soft that I could squish it and it didn't break. It even bounced when I dropped it, just the same way I dropped the first egg that had the hard shell. Hang on, I gotta wipe my hand off. <laughs> it's a little, a little gooey from the raw egg and from the vinegar. You'll have to try that one at home if you can. That's pretty good. So why did I show you that today about this story? Boys and girls, it seems impossible that that egg that was hard could become soft. It was, it was, it's a hard shell. How does that get changed? Well, when that egg soaked in that vinegar, it became so soft I could squish, squish it. And it reminds me of Paul's heart. His heart was hard. When he was hurting the Christians and being mean, his heart was hard. And that means his thoughts and his feelings were being not led by God, but by his own sin and by what he thought was right, but not by God. His heart was hard. But when he met Jesus and let God guide his thoughts and his feelings, his heart became soft. And boys and girls, it's the same for us. God can make our heart soft too. And even if we aren't being mean and hurting other people, there might be parts of our heart that we aren't listening to God and we maybe need to be softened in those ways so that God can lead us too, that we can follow him and not what we think that we want and not let our own sin guide our thoughts and feelings. Boys and girls, let's pray about that as we end our time today. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you that when we spend time with you, that when we follow Jesus, our hearts can be softened and we can hear your voice. God, help us not have hard hearts, even in little ways where we want things the way we want them. We want our own way. Lord, help us listen to you and help us have soft hearts to hear your voice. All these things I pray in your name. Amen. Boys and girls, I had such a great time talking with you today about God. Have a great week.